Good evening, wrestling fans. Welcome back to another edition of Evolution of Pro Wrestling. I am your host, Lewis, a.k.a. the Encyclopedia of Pro Wrestling, back with an exclusive interview today with an um, <clears throat> interesting individual. This gentleman's name is Mr. Gino Rivera, the Frank Sinatra of the Spanish Mafia, of what he says. And we also have many other nicknames that he has. This gentleman has been all over uh, professional wrestling, and we want to see how he is going to enlighten us with his wrestling career. So let's invite Mr. Gino Rivera and see what he has to say. We're waiting for him. Uh, Mr. Russell Jackson, what's going on, man? And Nancy Henderson, hello. Okay, we're just waiting for... Uh, Waiting for this gentleman to come on, and we are going to start this interview. In the meantime, until we wait for uh, Mr. Gina Rivera, <clears throat> don't forget to tune in this upcoming Friday, Evolution of Pro Wrestling Trivia 3. That's right, 3. So, we are uh, we're going to make it a little harder this time. Okay, we're still waiting for Gino. What's going on? <clears throat> so Gino Rivera. Okay. Uh, where's Jaden? Jaden is eating. This is actually a, a private interview with a superstar. Jaden doesn't like to do the interviews, so he lets me do them. So I take care of it. All right, Mr. Gino, 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 where are you, young man? Running a little late <clears throat> while we may, while we wait for Mr. Gino. Oh, wait a minute. I think he just popped in. So you got headphones? I got headphones. Can you hear me or do you need uh, you need them you need them in? Yeah. yeah. Got them right here. Can you hear me? Can there hear we me? go. Much better. Absolutely. There you go. No, because I heard a little echoes. Now we're good. All right. All right. It's the Gino Rivera of what you say, the Frank Sinatra of the Spanish Mafia. That's right. That's oh, right. I, I, you sent me your resume, and it, it, it's impressive. You know what I mean? Everything you've done in 205 and in indie wrestling and, like, the superstars you work with, like, Tell us how it began. What made you become a wrestler? You know, like what gave you that inspiration? So um, when I was very little, uh, my mom was a big wrestling fan. She was a big Undertaker fan. And we'd watch wrestling all the time, you know what I mean? And we'd go to the stores and we'd buy the little Hasbros and stuff like that and go to the mall and buy all the figures and stuff. You know, just my mom was an avid fan, dude, like hardcore and... Eventually, you know, as a kid, you watch what your mom watches on TV, you know what I mean? You turn off Golden Girls and, oh, wrestling's on. Here we go. You know what I mean? So um, my very first memory of wrestling was just WWF. And um, ever since then, I've been hooked. I wanted to be a pro wrestler from the time, I mean, gosh, you know, in first grade when you got that little box and the three lines and they tell you, draw oh, a picture of, of what you want to be. Everybody mm -hmm. was everybody was drawing, you know, like the the police officers and firemen, and here I am was just drawing the wrestling ring and a stick figure of me, you know what I mean? Saying I want to be a wrestler. I always knew I wanted to be one. I am one today, um, and I owe that all to my mother and the company that got me into wrestling, which I have their shirt on right now, Santino Bros Wrestling. That's uh, who gave me my start. So, okay, mm -hmm. no, that's that's interesting that. <clears throat> That you mentioned about watching wrestling as uh, as a kid, yeah. um, I used to watch wrestling with my father. My father eventually got tired of it. I continue being a fan. I, I'm, I'm old school <laughs> to the heart. Old school that, to the heart. That's how my mom is. My mom doesn't watch wrestling anymore unless Undertaker's on. If Undertaker, yeah, exactly, man, exactly. She, she she fell off around 2001, man. Like that's why because it, it's an old school thing, man. It's yeah. old school. You get a yeah. bit of that old school 80s and 90s. That's it. You don't want yeah. no more. Yeah. But um, when you mentioned that, I've I've seen I've seen that you mentioned you worked for uh, WWE two, uh, 205. Yeah. How was that experience 
going to the WWE. You know, something you grew up watching. Yeah. And then, boom, here I am. Well, what let next? me let me let me tell you something, man. Um, my dream for so long has been to be in the WWF, the WWE now. But um, as a kid watching something your whole life, and now you're you're working there, or you you got to get an opportunity. Um, can you say dream come true? Check, you know, I'm checking that off definitely. And um, just the whole, I've been working with WWE on and off since 2014. Um, the 205 Live came uh, in 2018, February. <clears throat> Uh, it's episode 65. It's me and Evan Daniels uh, versus Grand Metalik and Lince Dorado. And guys, this wasn't a squash match. This wasn't throw one punch and get your butt kicked. This was, hey, show us what you can do out there. And that was it. And um, just getting to the arena, not knowing what was going to happen, not, not knowing what was going to go down, was just nerve-wracking itself, itself because it's like, you don't get told what you're going to do until you get there. You might not even know 10 minutes until the show starts. And that's what was, that was my situation. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen. And they pretty much, you know, I get to the arena. They tell us to gear up and we do our practice matches, you know, like to see who, you know, see what we can do. And I had my match and they liked what I did. And uh, Baron Corbin, uh, uh, Jinder Mahal, all those guys pulled me aside and had nice things to say about me or to me. Um, and Dean Malenko, my agent was like, all right, well, you're going to be working with these guys. You speak Spanish. All right. Well, here's your guy, Grand Metalik and Lince Dorado. And, um, there you go. 205 alive. You know, here I was making my debut, <clears throat> in, um, Phoenix, Arizona, <clears throat> and I couldn't be happier. My dream came true. You know what I mean? Um, just putting on my boots, putting on my gear for that match, man, I just was this, it wasn't anything like a nerve wracking feeling. It was more of like, oh my God, like my dream is coming true. How many people can say that they've accomplished their dream? You know what I mean? Like most people want to go to Disneyland. Most people want to, you know what I mean? Win a million dollars. Like for me, I just wanted to wrestle for the WWE and I got to do that. So it wasn't, I was not nervous whatsoever. You could just, I was just in awe. I was like, oh my God. I mean, this, this, this poor kid, <laughs> Gats is living out his dream. Y'all, y'all don't understand. I'm looking at the crowd like y'all don't understand. Y'all are cheering for these guys, but y'all don't know how how happy I am. You know what I mean? I couldn't stop smiling. I drove home six hours after that show, and I was just, I I was just at my happiest. You know what I mean? Um, it was like Christmas, pretty oh, much. It, yeah, it was like, it was like Christmas, like, Christmas oh, came yeah, early. It was, it's like opening your favorite gift over and over and over and over. You know what I mean? That's no, the feeling I, I, I had. I could, I could imagine, you know, working with the likes of uh, Baron Corbin, especially Dean Malenko, you know, yeah, yeah. legend himself. So I looked up that, to that, that dude. That was amazing. You, you know, watching WCW uh, and, and you know, <clears> them doing their cruiserweight. The yeah, um, those cruiserweights set the way for the me. They paved mm -hmm. the way for me. Well, so listening to a guy like Dean Malenko, you know, shoot down an idea, pitch an idea. I was like, how cool is this? You know what I'm saying? So it was cool. Well, you, well, you mentioned, you also mentioned in your resume, you did a little um, background with the Usos and the New Day. Yeah. <laughs> um, how was that? You know, being that. with these guys, you know, these, the Usos itself, legendary Iona family, like yeah. itself, and the New Day, one of the hottest African-American factions ever in professional wrestling. Much yeah. respect to them. How yeah. was that being in the ring with these guys and hearing that crowd and hearing what they can do? Um, gosh, think of the your most favorite friend and you being on a roller coaster ride <clears throat> and you guys just laughing after because of the faces you made or the screams or whatever. That's how it was working with the New Day and the Usos, both of them. They're so playful. They're so nice. They're so like everything is nonstop funny with them. They're joking. They're they're teasing each other. They're laughing at each other. They're pitching ideas. They're, they're always trying to up one up each other like this. And just picture a, a young me just going, huh, like this. This is amazing. Like, like everybody, it was such a good vibe, man. I've never been around people that happy in my life before. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. uh, everybody smiles, all parties from the New Day to themselves. <clears throat> Even the guys that was working as extras alongside with me were just all, it was like a party. A party of 30, 30 dudes, and we all just laughing, throwing jokes, and telling each other what we want to do and how it's going to sound. It was just so amazing. The Usos are 
um, guys, that's who they are, man. The New Day, that's who they are. Like, they, they're not playing around. They're not uh, being a character, you know what I mean? They're not Earthquake. They're not King Mabel. They're just little, like, Xavier, Kofi, and Big E, and that's how they act 24-7. And I got to share some laughs with them and listen to, the, you know, what they had. And, you know what I mean, we're going over the whole rap, you know, because they wrote that down. They're like, okay, should I say this? No, 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 that's, oh, that's, no, man, you can't say that. That's whack. Say this. And they're saying stuff, and we're just laughing. I'm like, why wouldn't they keep that? That is so funny. It was so fun. And then you got the Usos coming backstage, like, what you guys got? What you guys got? And I'm like, you see, you see. And it's just like all of us, you know, backstage, like, legit having a battle going like, all right, we're going to see you out there. We're going to see you out there. See what you got. And it was so much fun. Like, I still got butterflies, like, just because... Just because the stuff that was said and then the stuff that didn't uh, make TV, um, because they probably took it out. I was like, man, they should have said this, but it was so much fun. Time on my That's life. good. That's really good, man. That's good. It's it's it, it's dreams like that that make <clears throat> make restless now try to pursue yeah. that dream, you know, of the dream yeah. you have mentioned. Um, I ask each talent that comes on the show this question. I'm gonna ask you the same question. If you had a choice right now. For a dream match, whether it's WWE, WCW, NWA, New Japan, AEW, anything you can think of. Yeah. If you had a choice right now, who would you pick for that match? Oh, gosh. I only got two people that I've ever wanted to wrestle in my life. And one might be a dream come true soon. I can't let that out the bag. But uh, my dream match would be against The Undertaker. Mm. Um, I, I, I have been an Undertaker fan my whole life I had a chance to meet him and that is a funny story by the way please don't let me leave without telling you that story um but um my dream match would be the undertaker bar none and if you know because of our age I might never ever get the chance to wrestle him ever um you could probably promise that I won't be able to but there's always another guy that I wanted to wrestle and his name is Psychosis um, a cruiserweight from WCW, and he's yep, still on I the independent Sakos, circuit. He was in, uh, AAA Lucha, Lucha, Lucha yeah. Libre. Yeah, mm -hmm. Nico. Well, exactly so, shout out to Nico. Um, I've <clears throat> I've crossed paths with the guy. I've seen him on the circuit. He's still, you know, here and there. He's, you know, kind of on his way out. But I hope I get him before he leaves. You know what I mean? I, I've made a pact to myself that you need to wrestle that man before you leave. You know what I mean? I, I made a pact to wrestle for the WWE. I did that. To meet The Undertaker, I did that. Now I got to get the psychosis thing before he leaves. But there's just two people that I wanted to wrestle, Undertaker and Psychosis. I was a huge fan of Undertaker as a kid. My mother was a huge fan. Not only that, uh, Psychosis, when I saw his mask for the first time in WCW, I was just like, that is cool right there. Like, that dude looks dope. You know what I mean? And I've just been a, a fan of his mask the whole time. I got a mask in my office somewhere of him. And it's just like... That that is like that's a trophy, you know what I mean? So, just to, to stand in the ring one day and and see him come to the ring, that would be great. Uh, the Undertaker, we all know what's up with him, you know. Thank you, Taker. He's he's done it. I, he he might be retired. I don't know. They keep playing tricks oh, oh, on my heart. Oh, okay, so <laughs> so okay, so you said you you had a story about the Undertaker. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to tell that story as well as promote any upcoming events, any your social media. Floor's yours. All right. So I got a gift. Look, man, um, I'm a poor kid. Uh, I, come from, I come from nothing, and I made myself something on my own. And um, I came up on a gift where somebody, you know, gave me tickets to meet The Undertaker. And my, my world was just done. I was like, yo, I'm done. Throwing in the towel, I'm done. You know what I mean? I'm going to meet The Undertaker. You telling me this is real? This ain't a joke. Like this is no. I looked it up. Hey, November, blah blah blah. You can meet the Undertaker, and I said, "Oh my gosh!" So I sat in line like a fan. You know what I'm saying? I sat in line, waited there. I'm I'm anxious. I'm thinking of all these things I'm about to say. I'm gonna be like, "Yo, Taker, you've been my idol. My mom loves you. My favorite match." Da da da. Not even being a wrestler, just being a fan. You know what I'm saying? Just just everything I'm about to tell him. You know what I mean? I'm excited. I'm hyped. We getting closer to the line. He come out. I'm screaming. Ah, I'm screaming, man, losing my head. I see him. He's sitting down. A couple people go through. An hour goes by. I'm like, yo, I'm about to. I'm almost there. I hit another corner. I'm like, no, I ain't always there. And then all of a sudden, boom, I'm next. 
Undertaker's right there. And I'm seeing him. I'm snapping pictures. I'm like, let me get this angle, all these angles real quick, because this is the only time I'm ever going to be this close to him. Getting all these angles. The lady's like, okay, hi. Um, how would you like me to take the picture? I said, long ways. I want everything. You know what I mean? Don't take it like this. Take it long ways. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to get my phone to show her because they got a password. So I'm turning everything off, airdropping everything, everything off. No one can interrupt this photo. You know what I mean? And this lady's messing with my phone. She goes, I'm sorry, I have an Android. I'm like, oh my God, this is an iPhone. Look, this is how you do it. Boom, boom, boom. The whole time, Undertaker is behind me with his arm, with his handshake, just like this, waiting for me to shake his hand the whole time. I didn't even know. But everybody's like, yo, look behind you. I'm like, yeah, 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 I know he's right there. Yeah. So blah, blah, blah. And he's just like this, waiting for me. And, and I turn around. And I'm like, she, I'm like, you good, you good? She's like, yeah, yeah, I got it. I turn around and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me shake his hand, right? Shook his hand, boom, stood next to him, got the picture. He said, thank you, have a good day. I walked away. I didn't say nothing to the undertaker. I said nothing. I've been, I was plotting for like almost four hours of everything I'm gonna say. All I wanted to tell him was, undertaker, you meant that much to me. You inspired me to be a wrestler and thank you so, that's all I wanted to tell him. I didn't say not one word to the man. All that time, he was standing there waiting for me to shake his hand. I shook his hand. I got starstruck and walked away. Almost forgot my phone. And I was like, yo, that was a complete waste. What did I do? Oh, my gosh. I was, I was so upset because I had my idol there and I didn't say nothing. I, I, I've met tons of stars before in my life. And I've never been as starstruck as to when I saw The Undertaker face to face. My, 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 my chest right now is like twitching because I'm still nervous, like I'm there. And I saw The Undertaker and I just was like, hello. Picture and gone, that's it. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that is the worst thing ever. Like, why did I do that? So, I mean, there's my Undertaker story. I got my picture, but it's filled with like, uh, not a bad memory, but I just wish I could have done more, you know what I mean? But he is my idol, my favorite wrestler, my mother's favorite wrestler, and I got to meet him again because I got to tell him how I feel so we can get on that. You know what I mean? But other than that, guys, um, my name is Gino Rivera, the Frank Sinatra of the Spanish Mafia, the Latino Al Pacino, the Puerto Rican Pitbull, Mr. 205 Live. And you can find me on all social media platforms from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Gino Told You So. Check out my, um, my, my SoundCloud, which I do music. Uh, my cameos, my, my pro wrestling tea site. Guys, I'm everywhere. I am everywhere. I just put out some new hats with the action figure, which the action figure should come out soon. Check out my school. Um, what's that called? Centino Bros Wrestling. You can also check out the school that I train with my students, uh, off, off the Ropes uh, Wrestling School, OTR in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is Gino Rivera, and um, it, this was so much fun, guys. I hope we can definitely do this again. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure having you on the show, man. We wish you the best of luck in uh, your wrestling career and just keep moving forward, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. This is so much fun. I hope you guys, guys, I got tons more of story. Like, I got so many stories to tell y'all from just indie wrestling to coming up to some WWE stuff to working with AEW. Bet you guys didn't know about that. But uh, there's, there's a bunch of stuff that I could uh, I could tell you. I'm Puerto Rican, so I can talk all day. So don't play with me. <laughs> So, I, I am too. I am too. Oh, so there we I, go. Right there. One yeah. love, baby. But yeah, we will uh, we'll work on that. We'll work yes, on sir. that. Maybe uh, have you as a guest on our show. We'll meet my uh, co-host, my son. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's, Let's do it, man. So, all right, man. I'll take care. And all you have right. a good evening. You too, sir. Bye, guys. Have a good day. And uh, he's definitely looking uh, to make a name for himself in professional wrestling. But thank you, fans, for watching. For as always, please follow us on Evolution of Pro Wrestling on all our social media platforms of YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. We are now in TikTok. Um, join us this Friday. It will be our trivia show, episode three, Evolution of Pro Wrestling, episode three. Um, we are also doing our topic of discussions. Remember, we will be putting our voting um, for our watch party this uh, Saturday, I believe. 
and also we will be announcing when we will be when we will be starting the Thursday night throwback of putting original episodes of Evolution of Pro Wrestling on uh, Thursday nights and just having you guys watch. Okay, from all of us here at Evolution of Pro Wrestling, have a good night, fans.